Okay, so another molding video, um, or interior trim video. You know, this is kind of extensive trim, so it's got to be done in uh, several videos. I mean, I've got some, some earlier ones when I was kind of getting started getting, doing all this. But I've got um, this partially completed, so it's a little easier to explain when it's partially completed. Um, I'm doing this detail in all, in all the main rooms, down the hallway, both sides, master bedroom, and office and all that. And this one, uh, this is four feet tall. So basically it's, I use quarter inch birch plywood. I apply that to the wall first. And I, I just run it horizontally. Um, you can do 42 inch also looks good. Uh, but then, I mean, it's, it, you're not really saving much money. Well, you're saving a little bit six inches shorter but you, now you got to rip the plywood to 42 inches and, and um, I you know there's 12 foot ceilings in here definitely need 48 inch in in, in here because I got 12 foot ceilings in these main rooms but even the rest of the house is 10 foot ceilings 48 inch still looks good but 42 is okay if for whatever reason you want to do 42 inch you can um, but anyway yeah so and then everything is off the floor a quarter inch so even the plywood we went the plywood on the wall um, I put some, some shims underneath to hold it up off the floor. Then, of course, I pulled the shims out. So everything is up off the floor a little bit. There's concrete floors. Um, you know, they, they do sweat a bit. So um, just don't want all that wood contacting the floor. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it's good, too, when you... Well, even the door frame, when I hang the doors, also even the door jams are off. But the reason I do that is so I can slip the, the flooring underneath instead of trying to cut the flooring on the door jams. But all this stuff here, as you can see, is up. Now, if you're doing rooms with carpet, we're going to do some carpet in here. You want to leave everything up about a half inch. The carpet guys can put the carpet underneath. Uh, it's easier for them, and, and you're not going to see it. Uh, but in here, I'm doing, I don't know, maybe 5 16 inch, something like that. I'm going to use luxury vinyl flooring, so I don't, I don't need it to be up a half inch. I mean, it could be, because I've got to put, when the flooring's in, after the flooring's in, I'm going to put a, a three-quarter by three-quarter inch quarter round molding. Like a, it's like a big shoe mold all, all the way around anyway, so... Um, but anyway, yeah, so so I put the plywood on the walls, and then I've got one by four down here, and I've got another one by four here. Um, and this one by four here, the top one, the top of it is at 11 and 5 eighths inches off the floor. Not off the shim, but off the floor, right? Measuring off the floor, it's 11 and 5 eighths. And that gives me the height, I figured it out before I started, what height I need so I get a, it's a little bit of this showing on top of what's going to be the finished base molding. So this finished base molding, this is the finished base molding here and this is one by eight and then there's a, a, a panel cap or a base cap on top of it and see I wanted just a little bit of that one by four to show um, I mean, I could have had it up higher, too. I could, you can have more showing. It's just I just, just decided this amount. Um, if you wanted more showing, you would, you would have it up more than 11 and 5 eighths. Uh, and then this is a base molding in itself, but I'm using that as, a, as, as, as part of the base to build up to make really, this for me, this whole thing is the base. Okay, so this is a 4 and a quarter inch by 1 and a 16th inch. It's really a base molding on its own. It's sold as a base molding, but I'm using it as part of this entire base. So anyway, yeah, so this is the top of the 1x4, uh, and then the other one is down here behind this, and this, this is a 1x8. Uh, the reason I bought 1x8 is 1x10 was not available in MDF. They don't stock it. They would have had to special order it. Uh, not special that the mill's going to make it up special, but the distributor that I buy from, would have, they don't stock it themselves. So all the rest of the stuff, they stock in inventory. So I'd have to order it and wait like 10 days. Or, it, it didn't matter um, because I'm... I'm putting this over the top and it covers it. So this sits on top of, I'll cut a bunch of little blocks that are like two and a quarter inches high and then set this on top of it, a two and an eighth, whatever they are, I think they're two and an eighth. This sets on top of those and then this covers all those little blocks. I'll, I'll show you over here. Um, see, so I just cut these little blocks here, here, and then I set this on top and then the base cap. Uh, this is actually a panel mold. You know, it's one of these deals. It sits, uh, the lip of it here sits on top of the molding, and then it, it just sits against the, the wall, so it's kind of tipped back. 
it's a panel mold, but I'm using it as a base cap. So that, that sits on top of here like that. And then that other molding covers down here. The, the one I said, the four and a quarter inch base, and that covers these up. So it didn't matter. I didn't need to buy one by 10. Um, I probably saved a little money. It's just that I have to cut these little blocks. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that one by 10 will sit, or one, so one by eight will sit on top. And then the top of the base, I'm using for base cap, will come up to about here. Okay. And then, and then uh, here, these ended up being like, uh, I don't know what they are. They're 30, 31 and 13 16 I think, in length. And then this five inch sits on top. And that takes you up to the top of the plywood. It takes you, you end up about 45 and a quarter. That's a 48 and a quarter. Or four, whatever the distance off the floor, I put the shims plus 48 inches. So 48 and a quarter, 48 and three eighths, something like that. And then for here, um, I took one by four and I ripped it down to two and a half inches. I think it looks better to have that as a different dimension than, uh, you can see over here also, even, even up here. Uh, then to leave it at three and a half. Nobody really does that, but it's kind of an old school style. And this entire th house is done in an old school style. So I ripped this, these down to two and a half. And then, uh, uh, so I, I measure, I, I, I go on a measuring spree. So first I put the, the plywood, of course, and then I put these. And then I cut these. And I'll put one here. And I'll put one down there, and then I'll set this on top. It just holds it with a couple of nail on each end, and then I fill these in, in between. They're all cut the same length, right? And then after I put these in, then I, I measure all these. So then I'll, I'll measure all these pieces, and then I'll measure all these. So I take a measurement here, here, here. Well, these are measurements are usually the same. And then a measurement down here, and I make a little cut list, and then these. And these are the same length throughout the house. So I've got a little pattern piece for these. It's like six and a half inches. And then this is like 22 and you know, 11 sixteenths, I think, something like that. So then I just cut a, I cut a bunch of them. So I make a cut list, how many of these pieces I need, how many of these. And then these are not always the same. Because uh, if your door trim is not perfectly plumb and that corner is not perfectly plumb, this distance here on the top is not necessarily the same as on the bottom. So these can be off a little bit. So these are not necessarily all the same length from top to bottom. They can vary 16th or so. So then I go through and I measure all these. I make a cut list and then I cut them all. Now, whatever amount of pieces of these pieces I have that are, you know, if there's three or more the same length, I just make one and then I use that as a pattern and trace the other ones. It's quicker than taking the tape measure and measuring the molding each time, you know, while you're, while you're at, the, at the miter so. So if I got you know six or seven of them that are like 13 and a quarter inch, some might be 13 and 3 sixteenths, some might be 13 and 5 sixteenths, you know, or, or even a shade less, which I'll put a minus sign. If, it, if it's 13 3 sixteenths but a little bit less, I'll put 3 sixteenths and a minus, meaning make it a little shorter than that. Uh, anyway, I'll, you know, I'll cut. So if I got 13 and a quarter, whatever pieces, so I'll go through and I'll look, because I, I make a note on the plywood as I'm measuring. Okay, 13 quarter, 13 quarter, 13 quarter, 13 quarter, whatever it is, there's seven or eight. I'll make one piece of 13 and a quarter, and I just use that as my pattern piece to cut the other ones. But then I'll use that up in here because every wall is different, so these, th these dimensions here are not consistent throughout the house. They're different with each wall. These are always the same, and these are always the same. So these I just have pattern pieces I've been using for the entire job so far. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so then I'll go through and I'll, I'll go on a marathon thing and there's like seven, so, so there's seven sections and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pieces per section times seven is 56. I've got 56 pieces of molding plus a few more because I've got to do around the outlets. Um, that's how I do around the outlets. That's a one by four and then it's whatever length I need because electrical plates, so it's three and a half inches wide, electrical plates are usually like the smaller I like the smaller plates they do make oversized plates but I like the smaller ones I think they're like three they're like three inches so the plate will just cover this nicely okay um, it's too hard to figure out when you're doing your electrical exactly to tell the electrician so you don't have to do 
any of this. I mean, you know, so, you know, to have it like right in the middle of the pile, it's just too at that time, so I just haven't put them in. And then I deal with them, you know, I mean, every wall, there's, there's one here, there's one, there's one down there, you know, so I just deal with them. And like this one here came, came up this way. With it like that, you know, like that. Um, yeah, so so that's how I do this this detail. Um, if you want something that's upscale, it's a little time consuming. You know, it's a lot of little pieces of trim. Now this is paint grade, so I don't have to cut them really super tight, as you can see. I mean, there's, you know, there are some gaps here and there. If it's stain grade, this is very time consuming. Um, you got to cut everything exact, but you know, paint grade. I mean, get it close. There's not a lot of gaps. Whether it's, there's no gap or a small gap, they're gonna run caulking there anyway, so it's not taking them any more time. You know, everything's gotta be caulked, every joint. So wh whether it's, it's even this one, as tight as this one is here, they're still gonna, they're still gonna put some caulk in there. So I don't feel bad by having a few gaps here and there. Uh, it's just faster. And still, this is, this, is, this is, you know, if you start this in the morning, this is gonna take you all day by the time you're done. It's a lot of pieces of trim. Um, now, I got to start really late today, so I'm, I'm not going to finish this today, but that's fine. I um, still got the one, the one by eight, and the base cap, and the other base molding at the bottom, and I got the, the, this detail here on top that I got to do, so, um, and it's almost time to go home now. So anyway, yeah, so that's kind of, that's, that's how I do this. And then on the top here, so what this is, this is windowsill. This is five and a quarter inch wide windowsill that I ripped down to two and a half inches. And the reason I use windowsill is, um, let's see if I got a piece. Okay, here's a piece. Is because it's got this this detail on the front. And then that three inches that I cut off or whatever it is, I, I use that somewhere. I'll use that somewhere else. So I've ripped this to two and a half inches, and then that gets nailed. on the top of here like this and then underneath here I I use um, I use door stop door stop is the little trim that's on the this is door stop it's on the door frame this stuff here this little trim stops the door when you close it so I'll use that um, so here's a piece of door stop. I've actually ripped this down because I think this is one and three eighths, and which is too, it's too wide. It, it sticks. It, it'll stick out too far. So I think I've ripped this down to one and one and a sixteenth maybe or whatever it is, something like that, because I want this to sit. You know, it's upside down. I don't want it to sit all the way out here. Where this detail is. I want it to sit back a little bit, like an eighth of an inch, to give you a little profile here. So I have to rip this down a little bit from the way it comes from, from the supplier. Um, anyway, yeah, so that, so this is here, and then this, this one is underneath, all right? It makes it look thicker and beefier, and then this panel mold goes up underneath the, the, the doorstop mold, and so, so you've got this sill, I see the thing wants to, I can't, Phone wants to focus on that. But yeah, sorry about that. It wants to blur. And then here's the here's the the stop molding turn. You know, you can just see the front edge of it. And then here's the the panel mold shoved up underneath. So it it, it gives you a, a nice look, uh, especially when you see it. You know, from the outside corners, or you see it here. So here you want to run it past. You know, just chop it off here. You you want this, the bottom of this molding here to end up right where the door frame starts. So you need to, I think I ran this past, I don't know, from the from here to here, I think it's around one and a quarter or one and five sixteenths past. And then um, I do a little return in here because it looks better. You know. Well, all, they all have a little return on Well, not that stop mode because it's just a sport holding, but uh, yeah, so even I, I even see I can fill in here and do a little cut a little return. Yeah, so, that, so, that, so this here on top, this is one by six ripped to five inches and the reason I rip it down a half inch to five inches is so that uh, by the time this comes down you got three and a half inches from here to here which is the same as, as your one by four so this ends up the same as this because this takes up well, you know you're really measuring from here down this takes up an inch and a half 
So you've got five inches total. This is the top of your, your five inch here, and this is sitting on, on top of your, your five inch. And then by the time you put this in front of it and this, you, you end up three and a half here. So it, it looks, uh, it looks, you know, correctly when you see it from, from a distance. So anyway, so that's kind of that's kind of how I'm doing this. Um, uh, outside corners, I, I do my derm. Uh, I, I make all my outside corners in the beginning before I start. I count all my corners. I set my swap on a 45 degree. Actually, I set it like on 46 degree because these are never outside corners in drywall are never 90 degrees um, because. This is a corner bead applied on top of the drywall that sticks out from the drywall, and then the, the, the drywall mud is back. So this is now no longer a 90 degree square. It's, it's built out a bit. So it usually ends up, instead of 45, it usually ends up being like 46 and 46, or 46 and a half and 46 and a half. When you, when you, when you, when you cut your miter, even when you put this piece on top here, this, the two and a half inch one, you won't be cutting these at a 45. They'll end up being like 46 or 46 and a half if you want them to be, to be tight. Like 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 this. Okay. And then I, I always glue these. I put glue here. I glue these. I glue the little returns. I glue here. Um, I glue the inside corners. You know, like that. So, yeah. So anyway, um, so that that's how I do that. And then and then you end up getting, you know, it's kind of a. It's a cla classic look, you know, it's it, it's nice. I mean, it, it adds a lot of detail. Like I said, it's time consuming. It's an old school style, but it uh, it really adds a lot to a house because nobody's doing it. I mean, not too much anymore, you know. So it's even fine. It's even hard to find people that can do this because these are old school styles. They know the new styles, but they don't know the old styles. And I, I think the old styles just look better. You know? So I just think the way things were done uh, you know, these are classic styles. I think it's probably if you went back to the buildings built in Rome, the Roman stuff 2,000 years ago. I mean, I think that's how this all kind of started. I'm sure you would find this detail in those old buildings. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's time consuming, but it's worth it if you want something a little different. And then, you know, like all these moldings, I mean, you know, you got to cut them all. You got to nail them in, fit them in. Um, like when I'm cutting moldings on the saw, I have kind of a fast way to do it. Like I said, I take all my measurements, I write them on the plywood, and I make a cut list. The reason I write them on the plywood is I know, like if this is 13 and a quarter here, and this is 13 and 3 sixteenths down here, I know where those pieces go. And so when I make my cut list, I write, I write when I cut the piece, I write on the back really quick. And I don't write 13 and 3 sixteenths. I just write like a 3 and a slash. I don't write the 16 because they don't need to. I already know that all 13... So I just write a three and a slash, or if it's a quarter, I write one slash four. If it's one sixteenth, I write a one and a slash, you know, like that. Um, you know, it's just a little quicker. And then uh, when I'm cutting them on the saw, so I cut this miter here, and now I don't want to take and turn the saw this way. It's too time consuming. I just leave it in this position. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to, I'm going to use like, um, you know, this is my pattern piece, but I've got another pattern piece, so I'll line up the ends. I'll make a mark here, so now let's say this is the long uncut piece. I leave this on this position, so I just cut, now I flip the molding over this way, and my mark is here. So I, you have to hold it kind of, you know, you want to you hold it level. You don't want to tip, because it'll mess up your miter. But that just, you know, that just comes from experience doing it by eye. So I hold it here, and I cut. And, and while the saw, so now this piece is cut, and while the saw is still spinning, I don't take my finger off the trigger. This is the, the, the piece that, was, you know, this is the, the other end of the piece that you're, you're using. So, so now you've cut, so you've cut this way, so now I, I'll just take, turn it, I'll cut that piece off. Now I've got my miter to, for this end. I slide it down, I mark it, you know, 